Hello everyone. My name is BJ Custer and I'm the director of rehab here at the village at Orchard Ridge. And I wanted to talk to you all today about something that we here at Orchard Ridge are not immune to, something that we as therapists deal with um, a lot and something that we try to prevent as much as possible. And of course, what I'm talking about today is falls. So when better to talk about falls than in fall? I received my bachelor's degree from Brigham Young University, and I received my doctorate of physical therapy here in town at Shenandoah University. I've been a physical therapist for coming up on about 10 years, and I've worked here at the Village at Orchard Ridge for seven years in October. And I've loved every day that I've been here. Here on the screen, you will see um, some statistics that the National Council of Aging put out regarding falls. The takeaway message from this slide is that the older we get, the more likely it is that we are going to fall. For example, those that are 65, around the age of 65, typically fall one out of three people fall once a year. Those that are over the age of 72 fall every other year, and those that are over age 80 typically will experience one fall, at least one fall a year. Falls, unfortunately, are the leading cause of fatal injuries. Falls are also the leading cause of non-fatal injuries. So we need to figure out what it is that we can do here at Orchard Ridge to help reduce our falls and to help prevent falls from even occurring. The Journal um, of the American Medical Association, the, the JAMA uh, as it's often called, put out some more statistics and the, the one takeaway message from this slide is that falls cost a lot of money. Uh, we are often concerned about the rising cost of health care, premiums going up. We, we hear this a lot during the presidential cycle, right? Uh, falls have a big part to do with that. 11.7 uh, million hospitalizations occurred between 2008 and 2014, and those were because of falls. And that cost the healthcare industry $2.7 billion. So again, we need to do what we can to help ensure that falls are not happening and really to keep you all safe. When we talk about falls, we talk about um, reasons of falls and there are intrinsic factors, meaning my own personal being, what is it that caused the fall internally? And then we also talk about extrinsic factors meaning the, the environment that we're in or the, the conditions that we were in. Some of the intrinsic factors that are very common for those that fall are lower body weakness. The weaker our legs are, the less likely it is that they're going to be able to hold us up during dynamic movement and in dynamic tasks. You see on the screen vitamin D deficiency I, I don't want to be gruesome here, but one of the reasons why older folks fall is because of bone breaks and then they fall down to the ground. Oftentimes when going to the emergency room, the, the question then becomes, did their bone break and then they fell or did they fall and then the bone broke? And uh, it's a little, you know, did the, the chicken or the egg um, type scenario. But oftentimes they find out that um, based on the type of fracture that the bone itself broke first, causing the fall. Difficulties with walking and balance, another intrinsic factor, different types of medication, initiation of medication can cause dizziness, low blood pressure, uh, various symptoms that can lead people to uh, have a fall. Another is uh, vision problems. Our low vision group can attest to this. If you can't see where you're going very well, then the likelihood of you tripping over something is really high. Transition areas between carpet and tile, carpet and wood. These are areas where uh, if you have 
poor vision or if your vision is impeded, let's say it's dark, you're in a dark room, for example, then your likelihood of tripping in those transition areas would increase. Having poor footwear, footwear that is too big, flip-flops, um, slippers, sandals, uh, high heels. There are a lot of different examples of uh, poor footwear that can lead to falls. And then having an improper assistive device or the wrong assistive device. Let's say I'm supposed to be using a walker, but I opt not to use a walker. Or instead of using my walker, I decide to use a cane, which I haven't used in years. Whatever the example is, if you're using the wrong assisted device, then chances are that you're going to experience a fall. So some of the causes of falls, doing too much, carrying too much, reaching, making, trying to make one trip as opposed to three trips from your car to your apartment, whatever the case is. Doing too much can lead to a fall. Again, not using the correct assisted device or using the assisted device improperly. A classic example is uh, folks that are in the hallway with their rollators sitting on the rollator and pushing themselves backwards, uh, treating it like it's a wheelchair versus uh, a walking device. Uh, very common for people to fall backwards on those rollators. Uh, also common for people to bump into other people and have them fall. Um, so using an assisted device improperly can cause falls. We often see people using walking sticks. Uh, these are the, the big, tall walking sticks. The walking sticks are advertised in the fine print that they are not an assistive device. They can assist in exercise. Let's say I'm out on the trail and I want to get some more upper body motion going as I'm walking. They can assist with that. But in regards to balance and being able to recover from a loss of balance, the walking sticks are not appropriate. In fact, the walking sticks are very uh, malleable or bendable. And so if I were to lose my balance and depend on those, chances are the sticks are going to bend and or break, which could cause another injury on my way down. Not paying attention, distractibility. Uh, I won't go too much into this, but I've, I've seen residents say hello to me and run into a wall or run into a pillar. Uh, this was not my intention of saying hello to them, but uh, being distracted is one of the leading causes of falls. And then of weakness and stability, uh, we have already talked about that. Here on the screen are some different examples of assisted devices. Um, here, of course, we have our standard single point cane. We have quad canes, which are wide based canes. These typically, these big wide based ones are typically used by people who have experienced a stroke, not something that would be used for somebody that is um, ambulatory within the community or even within the hallways. This is really getting from, you know, your couch to the kitchen uh, type device, not something that you would use for long distances. This cane here, often referred to, I believe, by its, uh, by its brand name, but the Hurricane, or another wide-based cane, these are good because they can be, theoretically, um, left standing up. Let's say I'm in the kitchen and um, I want to leave my cane standing while I reach for a glass from the cabinet. Again, theoretically, it's supposed to stay there and be there when I try to retrieve it. Oftentimes, the little rubber stoppers on these canes can wear out and uh, it'll just fall over. So, uh, you know, you get your money's worth there. I think these run about $20. Here are the walking sticks that I talked about here on the right of the screen. Again, not an assistive device, but something that can assist with exercise. And posture, great for posture, getting people to stand more upright, but should not be used in place of an assistive device. Here are some more examples of assistive devices. We have our, um, our framed walker here 
This is not a wheeled walker, but you see four legs. Uh, this is, again, for somebody that is not very ambulatory, somebody that is really kind of using this at home to get from room to room, not to be used in the hallways for long distances. For that, uh, for long distances, we are looking at these front wheeled walkers. These are ones that can help facilitate movement, uh, facilitate better balance. Um, you always want to watch the back portion of these walkers, as I'm highlighting here, uh, getting plastic uh, discs or plastic sliders on the back there are going to be better than the rubber stoppers that they come with. The rubber stoppers will make a lot of noise, they can catch, and everyone that you pass in the hallway will know that you're coming because, again, it's very loud. But those plastic gliders, they can slide very easily across carpet, tile, wood, you name it. And then on the right of the screen, we have a Hemi Walker. The Hemi Walker is a, a lot like with that quad cane that I was talking about. This is for people, again, who have had a stroke, people that are really ambulatory within a home, getting from one, one part of their apartment to another. Uh, this is for people that need to bear a lot of weight through the cane itself or the walker itself, and not for somebody that is really uh, ambulatory and getting easily from one point to another. Here you see different types of rollators. Uh, I call this one on the right the Cadillac of rollators. The reason why I like these drive nitro rollators is because they have really large wheels. As you compare this front wheel to the other wheels, you'll notice that it's significantly larger. Uh, the reason I like that is because it transitions really well over different areas. For example, if I'm outside walking, uh, you could walk between different slats of the sidewalk and not even notice the slats in the sidewalk. Whereas with the, the, these other ones, like this one here in the middle or on the left, they have smaller wheels and the ride will just be a little more bumpy. Uh, sometimes those smaller wheels can get stuck. For example, coming in the building uh, to the concierge desk from outside, sometimes those wheels can get stuck in those little transition areas. Um, oftentimes get stuck on uh, those sidewalk slats or those transition areas between sidewalk and road where the, those bumps are. These drive nitro walkers transition really smoothly over those. And uh, again, I call it the Cadillac, so Cadillacs are expensive. These are the more expensive type of walkers. They are not typically, they are not covered by Medicare. The, this middle version here is the cheaper version, and of course, because it's cheaper, Medicare sometimes will help cover that. Um, but those drive nitros, I believe you're looking around $200, whereas these ones in the middle, you can get them from Amazon for less than $100. Uh, Walmart carries them. Believe it or not, I think um, Harbor Freight carries them, interesting enough. Uh, but lots of options out there. Most of your drug stores will have them. But again, they, they do come with smaller wheels, and that's something that I, um, I don't typically recommend those smaller wheeled ones, unless you're staying inside and not ambulating outside. These three wheeled walkers are fine for folks that are higher level. Uh, they can tip over very easily. Uh, so something, again, higher level, really just using it for some balance. The, the one nice thing is that these three-wheeled walkers are a lot lighter. So for folks that are higher level, that are driving, getting out into the community, sometimes I'll recommend these three-wheeled walkers because they can get them into and out of their car with much more ease. Um, we're, we're talking a couple of pounds difference between the four-wheeled walkers and the three-wheeled walkers. Uh, so I don't think they make adult versions of these type of walkers, but this is one of my twin girls using her assisted, assistive device. This was last year when she was learning how to walk. But if they do make adult versions of lions that light up and sing, I will be sure to let you all know because I'm certain that you would all love to have one of those.
All right, so talking about fall prevention in the home. I do, I wanna talk about different home environments and just tips and tricks that we can uh, do to adjust our home and make our homes as safe as possible. First off, did you know that our occupational therapy team can do home assessments? So with an order from a doctor, you can come down and our occupational therapist can go into your home and they can make recommendations to you. Let's say you fall, you fall in multiple times this year and you just can't figure out why, or you're always falling in the kitchen or that living room, that darn carpet, whatever it is, is, is bothering you and you just feel like somebody coming in and getting another opinion is, is appropriate, then our occupational therapy team can do that. They specialize in this, keeping you safe, making things easier, uh, activities of daily living, making those easier. This is what occupational therapy is. They can come in, they can recommend modifications. They will not make those modifications, but they can recommend those modifications. Um, another way to prevent falls, strength, balance training. Balance is something that we can learn. Just like riding a bicycle, just like walking with a cane, just like juggling, balance is something that we can learn with practice. It is not something that I want people to practice on their own. So when you're cooking your steak dinner tonight at the stove, do not practice standing on one leg. Do not practice uh, walking backwards. These are things that we like to do in therapy. Again, practicing higher level type balance activities so that easier activities like cooking or standing up from a toilet or getting into and out of your tub become much easier. Energy conservation, making sure that you have enough energy to get from your apartment to the bistro, super important. Uh, making sure that you do a self-assessment before you go out, knowing that you have everything that you need, you know where the stopping points are in the hallway. These are ways that you can help prevent falls. And then going back to proper footwear, making sure that you're not uh, going down to the bistro in your stilettos or in your, um, you know, your, your fuzzy slippers, making sure that you have the right, right footwear on is going to help prevent falls. Again, that home assessment, this is, this is one of the reasons why we have an occupational therapy team here, identifying hazards, making sure that you have the right equipment that you need, and that you're functional within your home. We want your home environment to be some, uh, be a place where you can go, be safe, and uh, get from point A to point B without too much difficulty. So take advantage of those home assessments. We have a great occupational therapy staff here on site, and they will uh, offer you all the recommendations that that you will need to keep yourself your to keep yourself safe. couple of areas that we want to look at in our home. Minimizing the decor. Uh, this would probably be more, uh, uh, more appropriate for those that live in a cottage, but making sure that we don't have big bulky mats in front of our door. These would be tripping hazards, something that my foot would catch on that would cause me to uh, you know, run into the doorway or trip and fall on the, the front patio. Door stops can be a great way of getting into and out of your door safely and making sure that you're managing that into and out of the, the doorway as safely as possible. They do also have magnetic door stops where when I open the door, my door will stay open because a magnet is holding it there. Uh, the recommendation here is that the doors automatically close. This is, this is part of the fire code making sure that front doors do not stay open within our independent living facility, but having something that can temporarily open your door and keep it open while you manage your uh, rollator going through the door, your scooter going through the door uh, would be appropriate and can help keep you safe, but not you, you don't wanna keep your door open uh, the entire day. We, we don't wanna see you inside of your apartment doing personal things, so. Um, but yeah, these are th those magnetic door stops are really great for people with scooters. 
We never recommend throw rugs. Uh, if you have a throw rug, the best thing that you can do is roll it up and put it in storage. Throw rugs oftentimes will catch people's toes and catch their cane, catch their walker, causing them to trip and fall. So if you, if you have a throw rug, donate it to your son or daughter or to the local Goodwill because somebody else can make great use of it. Hardwood floors versus carpet. Again, if I'm gonna go into the kitchen, let's say I have hardwood floors in my kitchen, I wanna make sure that I'm wearing the proper footwear, anti-skid socks. Uh, if I wear my, my typical Hanes socks and I walk in, or let's say I quickly go in to you know, grab a, a soda from the fridge during commercial timeouts of the, uh, the football game, that slick surface with uh, with those socks can really cause people to falls or cause people to fall. We just put hardwood floors in our kitchen, and my two twin daughters fall all the time because they go in there with their socks and they're just not used to it, and so they slip and fall. So keep that in mind, uh, those of you that have wood floors. Make sure you have the proper footwear on. Electrical cords, huge hazard, can cause you to trip. Making sure that you have wide paths, wide open pathways to be able to get from point A to point B is super important. For those HGTV watchers, uh, you will often hear the term open concept versus closed concept. Typically when they're referring to open concept, they're talking about knocking walls down and making your home much more open uh, in regards to the vista. Here on the top picture, you can see that if I'm coming from whatever that back room is there, let's say I'm coming and I'm going to sit on the couch, I've got an open area here where I can come from any angle and sit on the couch without obstruction. Whereas here on the bottom, I'm gonna to have to maneuver through chairs any way I come in to sit on the couch, whether I come in from any angle, I'm having to maneuver between furniture. This is a closed concept. This is not our preferred concept for home layout. I am not going to get involved with uh, you all redecorating your homes. However, keeping an open concept is something that you want to think about, especially if you're having imbalance issues, or if you have fallen in the past. Making sure that our hallways have proper lighting is super important. Uh, if you go to the dollar store, you can find night lights typically for about a dollar. That's why they call it the dollar store. You can go to Walmart and find them for a couple of dollars. Uh, plugging those into outlets, just making sure that you have enough lighting in your apartment at nighttime. Falls at nighttime are one of the leading uh, causes of, excuse me, nighttime and darkness are, is one of the leading causes of falls here at Orchard Ridge. Oftentimes I hear people getting up and going to the bathroom and they have a fall. Or they get up at nighttime to go get a drink of water, maybe their medication is causing dry mouth and they have a fall. So making sure that you have proper lighting throughout your apartment is gonna be essential. Clearing your apartment of all obstacles, again, really important, making sure you don't have clutter on the floor, getting rid of those throw rugs, anything that is in your way that you have to step over or step around, uh, it's gonna be best to put those in a closet or in storage. Especially for those folks that have an assistive device, because that takes up a lot of space as well. So making sure you have enough space for it to maneuver uh, when you're getting from point A to point B. In your bedroom, making sure again that you have proper lighting, a bedside table light, night lights, uh, a lamp that is easily accessible. All these things are gonna be important. For some reason, uh, I guess maybe this is, uh, you know, the, the style, but beds are getting a lot taller. Maybe people think that if their bed is 10 feet off the floor, they're gonna breathe easier or I don't know, but having a bed that is too high is going to be a hazard because getting out of the bed, you're gonna slip off of that bed, maybe have a fall, crash down to the floor, 
or trying to get up on the bed, maybe you have to use a step stool and that step stool is a little wonky or you lose your footing, whatever the case is, you should be able to get into and out of your bed with ease. Um, these big sleigh beds often put the bed way too tall. I don't pretend to understand why uh, having such a, a high bed is uh, becoming the norm, but that's something that we wanna be careful with, especially as we age. Let's see, bed rails up here on the top right corner, you can see this is a, a bed rail that was purchased from Amazon that slides really nicely underneath the mattress and just offers a little bit more support for getting into and out of the bed. It does not um, alter the structure or the structural support of the wood frame. It, it really is just something that slides right under your mattress and is really easy to, uh, to put together and can add just that little bit extra support for you. And then arranging your furniture in the bedroom, making sure that you have enough space between the bed and the dresser to get around your bed and into the bathroom. Of course, having closet, easy closet accessibility is important, not having boxes in there or, or um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I haven't traveled in a long time. Suitcases, that's the word I'm looking for. Not having suitcases stored in your closet that can be a tripping hazard. Someday we're gonna use those suitcases again, I can promise you. In the bathroom, making sure that you have non-skid surfaces. Amazon sells these really cool non-skid stickers that you can put down on your tub that will offer a little bit more security while getting into and out of the tub or shower. They, you just pull off the little piece of paper and there's an adhesive and you stick them on the, the shower floor however you want. Again, our occupational therapy team can come in, they can assess, they can put those down for you if you've purchased them. Uh, anything that you can do to create non-skid surfaces is going to be great. Grab bar installation, they can recommend, our occupational therapy team can recommend that you put grab bars in. Maintenance can help install those grab bars into your apartments or into your bathrooms. The more grab bars, the better. The more places that you have a handhold on, the less likely it is that you're going to fall. Um, and then of course we have tub benches or elevated toilet seats, things that can help you get into and out of or be able to perform uh, the, those activities of daily living uh, more safely, going to be very appropriate and reduce the risk of falls. My big German head is covering this, uh, this anti-skid surface here, but you can see there the anti-skid surface uh, of the shower. Kind of looks like that person doesn't have toes, but um, anyway, my face is covering it. But that's an anti-skid surface that somebody put in their shower uh, to help reduce falls. Your kitchen, make sure you don't have unstable chairs. So here I'm circling stools that would be more appropriate for the dumpster than for your kitchen. These stools are very uh, less stable and the likelihood of you falling out of those stools is very high. Make sure you've got good solid chairs for yourself to sit on so that uh, you're reducing your risk of falls. Cabinet height. I don't make people taller, but my recommendation is that you put the more important things on the lower shelf and those things that you don't use as often on the higher shelf. That way you're less tempted to get on a stool or overreach and have a fall. And then we've already talked about those slippery surfaces, making sure that you're wearing the proper footwear or that you have uh, non-skid surfaces um, in, your, in your areas where you have wood flooring. In outdoor areas, you want to make sure that you're aware of changes in terrain, going from sidewalk to grass, sidewalk to road, road to transition areas where those handicap accessible ramps are. Lots of different transition areas here in Orchard Ridge, going from carpet to tile, tile back to carpet, carpet to wood, and just being mindful and aware of where those transition areas are so that you're careful. We're approaching cold weather, so being careful when you're out on ice. They do make canes that have a, a metal point that sticks down that can add a little bit more security when you're walking outside. 
Of course, they do make um, some elastic coverings for your shoes that allow almost like cleats that give you a little bit more support on slippery terrain. Uh, there's a brand called Yax Tracks, uh, Y-A-X-T-R-A-X, that they sell on Amazon. And this is what runners use in inclement weather so that they don't slip and fall. It's just something that slips over your shoe and gives you more support on slippery surfaces. And then having the proper lighting, making sure that uh, either you take a flashlight out, daylight saving time is coming, so it's gonna get darker faster. Uh, the worst time of year is when it's 4.30 and it's completely dark outside. So have a flashlight, something that you can carry so that you can see where you're going. Again, proper footwear, these anti-skid socks here, really important for in-home use, especially if you have wood floors and then not having shoes that are too large that are going to cause you to trip or, um, or lose your balance. We as a therapy department are here to help you in any way. Again, these are some suggestions that we offer to, for you to just look around your home and see what it is that you can do to help make your home safer. Again, if you are having multiple falls, recurring falls, get an order from your doctor, come to physical therapy. If you have a physical therapist in town that you've been going to for 10 years, go to them. I am an advocate for the profession. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, our goal is to keep you safe. We want you to be healthy. We want you to be able to do the things that you want to do and be safe while you're doing it. Again, falls are not something that we are immune to. They can drastically alter your lifestyle. So get help before the injury occurs. And of course, if the, if the fall has occurred, come to us. We will work on your balance. We will help uh, in any way that we can keep you safe. We love you, we care about you, and we hope that you have a great active aging week this week. Thank you all so much for tuning in.